Good morning, everyone. It is seven minutes past six, so I'm running slightly late this morning, and it's time to start the day. Off tomorrow, so let's see if I can get my coffee this morning. Oh, for God's sake, guys. Right, so always go to Morrison's at six o'clock to get my coffee and get some milk. Get there this morning. They're not even open. Not even open. Not even a garage will be near me at this time in the morning. Nothing opens till at least seven o'clock in this end. So frustrating. So, and now I'm stuck behind a tractor. So my day is just about to go downhill. For God's sake. Right, well, I hope everyone has a better day than I'm having this morning. And uh, I, um, I will update you all when I get on site. Um, we'll have a little chip wag. Oh man, good morning. Right, I've just got on site, guys. Just uh, got to close up the gate. And then uh, check to see if I've got some milk left from yesterday. And uh, go from there. So, gotta get my cup out of the car as well. Oh, turn my lights off. I haven't turned my bloody lights off in the car. Oh, right, so I've got that one. I can't even get into the car this morning. For God's sake. Um, right, so, up top. How's everyone doing? One thing I want to know, what's everyone's weather like? Where you are? Down here, it's two, two and a half degrees, it's not very nice. Not nice at all in here. So, um, not any snow down here this week, so that's the main thing. Which is nice. There we go, I'm not the car. Right, a cup on the roof. Right, um, yeah, I've not had any snow, but it's bloody cold. Don't really get snow down this end. Um, so, let's see how the day goes. So, first things first, set everything up. I've had my hand over. And then, um, do a patrol, vehicle checks and things like that. And then I'm going to do a bit of a thing on how to get your badge and courses and things like that. So I think we're going to do a chinwag on that later on this afternoon um, so yeah I shall make a coffee and I shall catch up with you all very 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 soon hope you have a very good day um, stay safe see you soon guys hello guys and welcome back again um, not quite the afternoon it's uh, quarter to eleven I've been out, I've done my patrol, and I thought I'd um, I'd do my uh, my little bit about getting your, joining the security industry and getting your badges, or badge. Okay, so back in June last year, I decided to make the move from the job I was in to security. I knew nothing about security and it was daunting. Didn't know how to get my badge, didn't know how to book training. It looked online and there's loads of videos, loads of different things on there. Um, and it just confused the buggery out of me. So 
hopefully this helps if you are thinking about coming into the security industry on how you should um, go about it. First things first, lots of people say you can't get into the security industry if you have a criminal record. Now, what you can do, you can check because um, uh, criminal record checker. So you can check, and you can do this by just going to Google and putting in SIA criminal record checker. I haven't got a criminal record, but the reason I did it was to indicate how long it could take for them to go through my application. It's basically one page of questions. Have you been convicted of any offences which you have received a prison sentence or young offenders or orders institution sentence for longer than 48 months or life and it, it goes on have you received any cautions warnings or have been have you been have you received an absolute discharge conditional discharge or abolishment in the last five years if you have just put yes have you been convicted of an offence which you have received a community order or a fine where the sentence restriction ended in the last five years? If you haven't, put no. If you have, put yes, obviously. Have you been convicted of an offence which you received a prison sentence? Have you been convicted of three or more offences in the last ten years? Okay, and then you just submit it. If you put yes to anything, it'll ask for extras, and you just tick the boxes that are relevant. And then you'll have to do a load more of stuff to show what it was, whether it was any good, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so that's a good way to start. So if you've, if you've been in trouble with the police um, when you were younger, go on to that. I will put the link in the description below for you to go on to it and check. Um, also everything um, with courses and things like that, um, again I'll put the link in the description below um, for you guys to be able to just click on it, find out what the courses are, how much they are. Different tra training providers provide different costs, depending on your area of where you are. Um, so let's start from the beginning trying to find a course I was quite lucky um, I found a course um, down here in Cornwall with a company a very good training company um, they also do um, lots of different other security work as well um, one of the ways I found them was just googling them but then I did a lot of research on them. So I did all my training um, through Secure West International. Secure West International is what it says it is. International company. Um, I The price I paid for my course was £300. It's a dent in your pocket. If it's something that you want to do and it's a career you want to follow... I, I, did, I, I would go for it. Um, I spent a lot more than that because I did courses on top and I like do another another video on other courses that you can do um, later on in the week. Um, so paid for my course and I, I wasn't quite sure what I was walking into. I'm, I'm quite it's quite daunting when you you're gonna go for a career change but you have to do a course and you just don't know if it's for you, whether, whether you can do the course whether you can do the course now I walked in and the trainer was good secure West 
worked extremely hard to make sure that every bit of course material was done. Um, and there's four 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 aspects of the um, qualification of the course before you do the exams at the end. Okay, so the, the four modules you'll study in, in, in if you go for the door supervisors course. Now there's there's a, a security uh, course and there's a yellow warning for snow effects in Southwest Odia. Um, there's a security badge which is just the blue badge and there's the orange badge which is the door supervisors badge which is what I went for. There's a CP badge which is purple, close protection. And there's another darker purple, which is the CCTV licensing. But we're going to just talk. We're just going to talk about for a second the door supervisor course because that's what I did. Highly recommend it. I don't. I think the SIA should get rid of the blue badge um, and put everyone onto a, a door supervision course. You go into a lot more depth into what you can and can't do, you learn a lot more about the law, you learn a lot more about the, the security industry itself. I've got loads of notes, so if I'm not looking at the camera, I apologise. Um, communications, uh, awareness of the law, which is something that people don't think we have, but we do. We have to, especially nowadays. It changes too much. Health and safety. Um, that, that, that goes on. There's pages and pages of this stuff. Um, these are just notes I've made. These aren't course materials, so please don't ask me for them. Um, if you want the notes, I will quite happily. Um, I can send them to you. But yeah, it's not course material. Different courses will be um, slightly different, but they're all run the same. So the four modules you'll learn are the following, the SIA's common module, and that is working in the private industry. In that one, you'll learn everything from when the SIA started to all the way through to, let me look at my little notes here, the difference between a door supervisor and a security officer. and why we're governed by the SIA. Door supervisory roles. So what is your role as a door supervisor module? That is in depth. Um, you go on to communication, working in Mem working within with, with around members of public um, and you look at customer care customer service um, and things like that you also learn about the law within the private security industry um, what your uh, what 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 you have the right to do and what you have the right not to do within the law um, what I didn't know when I'd done the course was that there were two different types of law. Didn't know that. Thought there was just one. But there's two. So I did learn something. Um, common law and criminal law. Um, talk about those. And you go into really depths, uh, quite a lot of depth into that um, on how different things are criminal law and how diff and what different things are civil law but sometimes civil law can migrate into criminal law so you learn all that on the course conflict management that's a, a module that is really good um, how you how to deal with conflict, what you do, what 
to de-escalate situations. Um, and then physical intervention skills module, which is a practical. Um, the conflict management is a practical module and a um, theoretical module where you PowerPoints and things. Physical intervention again is practical and theoretical, um, but very good. Whereas if you do just the security badge, you don't get the conflict management or the physical intervention. Just get rid of the bloody badge SIA. Get rid of it. Okay, so that's the four courses, uh, four, four modules that you'll do. Okay. The course is a uh, week long. Mine was a week and a week and three days. Um, because now you have to do your first aid. Um, that's mandatory. Um, and every security officer has to do their first aid when they apply for their badge for the first time. Um, if you haven't got first aid and you're going to renew your license, then you need to do some. Um, you have to do some more training, and uh, that includes your first aid. So it's a week, week and three days, my course, and I learnt a lot. And at the end of the course, you do an exam. You do several. You do two exams, um, multiple choice exams. Now. There's a lot of, should it be multiple choice or should it be written? So, I like the idea of the multiple choice. I feel there should be a bit of written in there as well. Because I think everyone should show that they can understand and they have a level of English writing lots of people don't when I left school I didn't really um, my writing was absolutely atrocious and when you when when you're doing this job I'm lucky I've got a laptop and um, all my reports are done on the on the laptop but there's some sites that I have to do handwritten reports um, and it's taken me a fair few years to get my writing so that it's readable. So I think in that aspect, yes, multiple choice is brilliant. Tick a box, make sure it's the right one, go to the next one. They are timed, so you have a certain amount of time to do them in. And you are under exam transitions. But don't let that daunt you, because everything that you would have learned in the course is part of the exam. Um, so I would advise when you're doing the course, you make notes, lots and lots of notes. I got loads of notes, loads and loads and loads and loads of them. A folder full of them. Um, I've also got about five, five different folders on my computer um, of other courses that I've done and other courses that I'm due to teach. So that's that. You've done the course. And you're waiting, you're waiting, and you're waiting, and you get a message emailed to you from your training provider saying you've passed the course. Brilliant. Whilst you're waiting to get that confirmation, I would advise you set up your SIA account. Now, the reason I say that is because as soon as your certificate has been released, is put onto your SIA account. The SIA then message you and say, your certificate is there. You can now apply for your license. It makes it just a little bit quicker for you. It doesn't speed up the process of how the SIA do things. So, go onto the SIA website. All you go onto is the SIA server. Oh, it's changed, hasn't it? Um, it's services.sia.homeoffice.gov.uk Go on to that, register for a personal account. You only register for a business account if you are a business, running as a business. Because that gives the business access to checking 
license statuses, license statuses, um, and and they can pay for badges of their 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 workers and things. Unfortunately, if you're self-employed, you have to pay for it yourself. But there we go. So you go on to there. You've been granted your certificate. Happy days. Next thing you do is apply for your license. So you go on to the SI website, log in, and then apply. You fill in the application form, making sure, for God's sake, please make sure that the information you provide is the correct information. Any mishaps on information will um, slow down the application process for both you and for the SIA when they do their checks. So you've done all of that and then they email you and say, can you take your identity document to the post office and get your picture taken? Now that costs £190. Okay, it's not, it's not free. And the reason it's not free is because they have to do a DBS check on you. Now the DBS check is a standard check, which I think should be an enhanced check. Um, I don't believe for one minute that the standard check is any good to anyone. Um, I've had three, three done, and one of them was an enhanced check. But for the SIA, they just do standard DBS checks. So the £190 is to pay for the DBS check. Again, something you can claim back if you're on self-employment. If you're on payroll, um, you can claim that back by doing a tax return Um uh, not a tax return, a expense return to the tax office at the end of the year. Um, right, so you've been granted your license. And then you've got to look for work. And you think, for God's sake, more work. Got to look for more work. I found work quite easily. A lot of these companies will give you pay pages of people that are looking for work. So you can go to a company and say, I've just done my course with so-and-so. This is, he, you know, I can use them as my reference and I'd like to start working in the security industry. 99% of the time, they will give you a job. Now, don't think that it's all going to be fun and games. There's going to be times that you go onto sites and you are sat there on your own, as I am today, and you've got a 12 hour shift to do. Well, that is part of the job. Um, you could be on a site with somebody else, which then makes the day go faster, which is great. Or you could be on site with numerous of people. It depends on what you're tasked with and where your employer sends you to work. If you've got the door badge, you can then go and do doors and events. Due to the pandemic this year, all the events were squashed. Put me out of a lot of money out of work. Um, and I was unable to do any of those one moment please I've got an alarm going off sorry about that guys that wasn't an alarm from my site it's one that's just on my area um right so yeah so that you you could you you're able to do um events Glastonbury um boardmasters down in Cornwall here um, lots and lots and lots of different places. Again, it's entirely up to you. What I would advise is you come into the industry, when you come into the industry, learn from those that you're working with. Ask questions, ask lots of questions. I ask loads and loads of questions. And even if it annoys people, just ask them. Um, so... That is pretty much the ins and outs of how you should um, 
look at getting your license. There are gonna there, there, there are loads of um, sites out there that offer training. There's a site called Get Licensed. Um, I don't particularly use them, but it, it gives you the option. So you can put your door supervisor training in uh, Cornwall for me, because that's where I am. And then find and get licensed. We'll look through and find different people that do the licensing. So Plymouth is the only one showing at the moment. And I think that's just because of... Um, Um, that's that's just because of the pandemic. Yeah, it is. Um, be wary of courses that are cheap. Okay, because cheap courses aren't worth doing. Yeah, it's great. You look at a course and you go, bloody hell, that's. 200 quid that's 100 pound more than what matthew said yes it may well be but you need to make sure that when you do the course that you're actually being taught the correct things especially when it comes to the physical intervention and the uh conflict management those need to be taught correctly okay that's important So what I'll do, I'll, I'll drop a link in the description below to the course, um, to to different sites, the SIA site, um, the government website that you can look at information from, um, and things like that. If you've got any questions, drop me a um, comment in the comment box below, and I will answer them in the next um, video like and subscribe if you want to get notified get notified of me um, when when I put other videos up um, so yeah that's that's that licensing is it's easy to do the training is moderate uh, training's moderate, but everything you learn in training you take out and you learn more and you learn better in the real world. It's like leaving school. You go to school, you learn in school, but in the real world you learn that there are things in school you don't need to use. So, um, okay, so that's that for me, guys. Um, I will... Put all the links in the description below. And uh, if you've got any questions, drop me a message in the message comment. Just very quickly, I had a message from somebody, a uh, comment on uh, the video from last night. I have a challenge for all of you. Go to every computer in your house. It's your mom. Shut up, Mr. Beast. Um, so I just want to answer those now. Uh, let's do that. Quickly. So the comment I had on my video was from Jamsterman. He asked me the following: If you were a uh, lava douche. Where is everyone? And do you have other duties on site? Uh, on site at all? So, because of Christmas, there is nobody on site. So I'm here on my own. But there's two things that are great. Yes, you're on your own. Yes, you've got a site to look after, but you're not on your own. 
and it sounds daft. But for every... period throughout the day, I have a driver come round who comes and checks up on me, has a cup of tea, a cup of coffee with me, which is nice. It's nice not to be on my own. Other duties that I do on site, I do vehicle checks, I do perimeter patrols, um, and because of the way the weather's been, health and safety checks on making sure everything's tied down. Um, so yeah, because of Christmas, everything's shut down, but also because of COVID. So this particular site only allows a certain amount of people on site. Um, and when they're here, it's uh, it's nice because then you've got somebody to talk to all day. Um, so yeah, short and sweet one is that they're at home with their families enjoying Christmas and chilling. Um, and we're here to protect their premises, which is part of the job. So I hope that answers your question. And I shall speak to you all very, very soon for another video. Cheers, guys.